Hey, what's up refers? There may be a sense of panic in my voice because there it is. So I finally found the frogfish for the 17 gallon drop-off tank and it actually arrived this, around noon today. Um, I was working, so I asked for the package to be shipped to my parents' clinic. When they received the package, it was really wet on the outside. It kind of dried off already, but it was really wet on the outside. They called me immediately and I was freaking out. I asked them to open the bag and see if the fish is still alive. So they opened the bag and most of the water has leaked out. What we got left is just tiny half cup full of water and they could not tell if the fish was alive or not. So immediately I talked to my boss. I was able to rush home for lunch and um, to just check on the fish and to kind of acclimate him if he's still alive. And oh my God, thank God that this guy is still alive. When I look at him, the mouth is opening and closing, so it is alive and well. So I'm not gonna talk too much right now. I'm gonna start temperature acclimating this, ta this guy in the 17 gallon drop off tank. And then um, I'll talk a little bit more after um, I successfully keep this guy in the tank. So wish me luck guys. So I got the frog fish and his back in the 17 gallon tank right now, temperature acclimating. I'm gonna leave him in here for about 15, 20 minutes for the water temperature to equalize. And we'll and then we'll start the drip acclimation. Um, it's gonna be tricky to do the drip acclimation simply because there's so little so little water in there. It's probably half a cup, so I'll do a really slow drip. And we will see if it gulped any air during shipment. Chances are it did, and we'll see if we can expel it. So far, so far, so far, it's not floating around. But then again, that's not enough water for him to float anyways. So if he did ingest air and he's have trouble swimming, then I may need to look into burping him, which is not something that I look forward to doing because I have no idea how I gotta look it up. All right guys, so as I took him out of the bag, I realized that most of the water is actually on the outer layer. So he is not even getting access to this water. Um, let me show you really quickly. You see how it's, it's almost like a vacuum packed fish. So there's just enough water to cover the fish, nothing else. Like all these are uh, empty a vacuum or air. So just right there. So it's kind of, that's why it's kind of squished. All right guys, so we got the drip going on. I'm doing a pretty slow drip for fish simply because there's not much water in there. And man, I mean, in the, in the, in the video, I guess like, there seems to be a decent amount of water, but when I actually laid the bag out, when it's not all vacuumed up, there's only, there's barely enough water covering the fish half of his body, not even the whole height. Just only half his body is in the water. And I guess um, it was really lucky where the head, the head of the fish was actually in the pocket of water. And I guess the water sloshing around as well. So the body stayed moist. All right, so the fish started crawling around in the buckets or the container. And we have been dripping for almost like more than half an hour. So I think it should be ready to go. So now I'm gonna try to release the fish into the, uh, into the tank without exposing them to air. Um, I already sucked out some, some of the water, so that's why it's not a lot of water. So here it is, mochi. I'm gonna fill the bag of water first. Okay, good. So I don't see a lot of um, the distortion. That means the water is pretty much, is really close to the tank. So now I don't wanna freak him out too much. Well, okay, it's freaking out now. So I'm gonna see if you, I'll open the hole a little bit more, see if you want to walk out. Oh, he's, he's just naturally going in. Look at that. He's going in. He's going in. He's going in. Oh, he's on a GSP. All right, let me get this tank out. Get it back out first. So I know in most, most of those cases, you don't want the water in your tank, but in case of the frogfish, it's kind of hard to avoid because you really don't want to expose them to air. So there he is. All right. So, he's in the tank. Yeah, this guy is actually the perfect size. He's about inch and a half, two inches. And most of the ghost shrimp should fit him perfectly in terms of feeding him. And eventually, um, I'm sure he will go for the yellow tail damsel as well. But that's also why they're in the tank. It, sound, it sounds kind of savage, right?
So the frogfish has been in this aquarium for the last three days and he is adjusting really well. He's able to move around fine. Thankfully, there doesn't seem to be any air bubble in the body, so no need to burp him. Thank goodness. And he actually ate a ghost shrimp the night that he arrived, so I was pretty surprised by that. And speaking of ghost shrimp, I bought three for 150 locally at Congressional Aquarium, and that cost is actually pretty high. So I actually set up a small desktop tank and my plan is to go to a fish store a little bit further out and I know they sell ghost shrimp for a lot less. So I'll buy like a batch, maybe like 12 or 24 of them and I will be gut loading them, meaning that I'll feed them high quality food and so all the nutrients in the body before I feed them to the frog fish. Now you may also be wondering what happened to all the fish in the drop off tank. So if you're following me on Instagram, you'll see that I actually moved all the green chromas to the 45 gallon tank already. And I left the two yellow tail damsels in this tank because the intention for these damsels is for them to kind of be tank mates because they're pretty, seems pretty nimble and pretty, pretty big for the frog fish to eat. Or down the road, they'll just become kind of like food. I know it sounds kind of cruel. Uh, but that is the intention, although seeing how agile these damsels are and <laughs> how small the frogfish is right now, I don't think the frogfish will be eating them anytime soon. So I may still be able to enjoy them for a little bit. We will see. Speaking of Instagram, thank you to all of you guys who reach out to me, um, sending me links to frogfish that are being sold, whether it's on Diver Stand or locally at your reef club. And how I actually ended up with this guy is that uh, somebody messaged me saying that, hey, I'm from Michigan and there's a forum in Michigan of somebody who's selling a frogfish. The first one he sent did not work out because that fish got sold the same night locally, uh, but he immediately reach out again saying that, hey, you know what? There's another seller uh, who's selling a frogfish at the same Michigan forum. I was like, oh, is that right? There's a lot of frogfish in Michigan. So I reached out to the second seller and we worked things out and that's how I was able to get this guy. Thank you so much, guys. Um, whether or not, you know, like I worked out when you sent it to me, I just really appreciate the fact that you thought of me when you see something that I have been looking for. So thank you again. And for all of you guys who are on Instagram and we're not connected on there yet, uh, come check it out. My account name is Inappropriate Reefer. And when I do YouTube video, usually I wait for the entire story to unfold before I cut it together. So it's, it's probably a week or two or three behind. Versus on Instagram, I have a tendency to just kind of post right away. Meaning that you will be there when the story unfold and I can actually will use some of your input um, as things are happening right away in real time. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys on Instagram. Now with that said, there's actually a lot of other updates I want to get into, but I want to focus this video just on the frogfish. So I guess I will see you next video. See you guys later.